Hello everyone, welcome in to episode 8 of the Ash Bros Gaming Podcast. My name's Ash and as always I'm joined by my wonderful friend and co-host Ash. Ash, how you doing my friend? I'm very well mate, how are you? I'm not bad, thank you. Excited to get into another episode. We've got a really special topic today that we've actually mentioned quite a few times, haven't we? Quite a few times, yeah. We've been waiting to do this for quite a while now, so it's finally (laughs) here. The time is here. After this, no more moaning about this game, I think. Until the uh, the next one comes out. And... <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, probably. Um, so, yeah, what do we have in store for you today? Well, we're going to do our regular, our regular segment of Higher or Lower, where I will put forward a game each week, and then Ash has to guess whether or not the next five games sold more or less copies than that game. Uh, we're also, as we've already alluded to already, we're going to talk about Saints Row, the Saints Row franchise of games, the decline, I guess you could say, what happened to the games, what happened to a, a beloved series, a beloved franchise, we're going to get into that, we're going to have a long, deep dive about that. As always, we're also going to suggest one game, as we do each week, and say why you should play it, why you should potentially buy it, we've got a good one for you this week. And at the end of the podcast, as we always do, we will round off by talking about the games that we have been playing this week. But before we do get into that, we've got a few important notices. As always, rate and review. Please, if you are listening to the podcast via audio on any of your regular podcasting apps, make sure to leave a rating on the podcast and leave a review as well. If you do get the chance, I wouldn't take you too long, 30 seconds, just say, Yes, this is the best podcast I've ever listened to in my life, and everyone should listen to it. Um, yeah, and that just really helps us. For. That's all we're asking for. Nothing much, is it? <laughs> just lie through your teeth if you if you don't think so. Um, and it's it's about time I got into the habit of saying that as well, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Too used to saying like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell. Yeah. Yeah. Smash that bell. Um, so yeah, rate and review, great way to support the podcast, just boost us up the algorithms basically, uh, that's for anyone who is listening to it on the audio versions. If you are watching the video version and you'd prefer to listen via audio, um, then you can do that, all the links will be down below in the description as well. Make sure to hit us on all of our usual social media platforms, we are on Twitter, Ash Bros Podcast, you can also find us on YouTube, again, the Ash Bros Podcast, we post lots of clips of uh, of the episodes on there if you want to want to find any um and you can also drop us an email if you'd prefer at gmail that is the ash bros podcast at gmail.com ash bros podcast at gmail.com so if you want to reach out to us on any of those uh platforms or any questions any kind of feedback on the, the podcast anything at all please do not hesitate to get at us there before we get into High or Low, I just quickly want to mention the Game Awards. Now, we kind of alluded to this, didn't we? We kind of spoke about this in the past, about how we were going to do a, a Game Awards episode, but we haven't really played enough of the games this year to do it. Yeah, I guess not. Like Some of the, some of the key, key games, key like uh, at the centre of the gaming community, we, we haven't actually played, amazingly no. enough. <laughs> No, <laughs> so it would pretty be pretty pointless us well, we'll, doing we'll, one. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's, uh, I mean, we'll have a think, but yeah, yeah. Sure. So because the things that have been, well, you you probably play more than me. Like, get, I'm think, trying to think of games that have came out this year that I've played that aren't sports franchises, um, like Pokemon Arceus, uh, Gran Turismo Seven, uh. And I'm probably struggling after that, mm. to yeah, be I, honest. Yeah. I know obviously you played Elden Ring, which is probably gonna, you know, clean sweep the awards. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Elden Ring was brilliant, obviously, but yeah, I probably did. I mean, I didn't complete it. No, uh, not even close. <laughs> not even close. People, mate, yeah. people are like 200 hours into that game and still haven't yeah. finished it. <laughs> yeah, it probably doesn't help that I'm terrible at it as well, <laughs> to be yeah. honest, but. Can definitely appreciate the mechanics and the visuals. Honestly, it's a phenomenal product. Uh, that's for sure. Um, and then things the, like God of War. Yeah, obviously haven't we haven't played. Yeah, that's probably going to be up there. 
Um, anything else? Yeah, I'm trying to think now. Obviously, the new Pokemon that came out last month, Scarlet and Violet, that we mentioned in the last episode. Yeah. So go and check that out if you haven't done so already. That probably won't be anywhere near because it was a buggy mess. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else. Obviously, Saints Row won't be up there, as we'll speak <laughs> about later. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think so. Um... So yeah, Stray might be up there. That's been Stray. Yeah. yeah, that was quite a big one. Yeah, a lot of people were, were hyping that up. I didn't play it though. No, no, me neither. Didn't look like the most sort of game to be honest. Neither Martin, no, neither same here. But it had a lot of good reviews. Yeah. So yeah, as we we were kind of saying, like we we did plan a game awards, and I imagine a lot of the video game podcasts that any of you listen to will be doing episodes on that, but we won't because we uh, just haven't played enough. So uh, there you go. Right then, moving on to the main meat of the podcast today. We are going to start off with higher or lower. Loving this segment, absolutely loving it. Um, And the best thing about it is that you guys listening or watching, whatever you are doing, can play along as well. So how does it work for any new listeners? Well, each week I will put forward a game. And this week, it is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And from then on, I will mention five games, and Ash has to guess whether those games, or Assassin's Creed Odyssey, sold more or less copies than all of those games. So, for example, in a recent episode, what did we do? We did Saints Row 2, actually, didn't we? That was our main topic. And then we said, did... um, What what were the games that we mentioned? I'm no, you're asking. Now. Um, there was uh, Fallout 4. Yeah, so for example, last week we did Saints Row 2, and the, one of the five games was Did Fallout 4 sell more or less copies than Saints Row 2? Then Ash has to guess, and then at the end we see whether or not he has passed. Three yeah. out of five is a Three pass for him, but pass. of course he's aiming for five out of five, aren't you? One day. One day, Brahma. One day. <laughs> Will it be this day? <laughs> Previously, I've had three out of five and two out of five. So really poor performances so far. But we're <laughs> always optimistic and we're always looking for more. All right. We're going to get that five. So for you, Ash, and for listeners at home or in the car, wherever you are, the game this week is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Okay. Tricky one for me. Um, you haven't played it? No. No, I know I know you're a big fan and obviously the Assassin's Creed franchise is massive. Yeah. Um so yeah. We'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. So the so first one is the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Did Assassin's Creed Odyssey sell more or less copies than the Elder Scrolls Oblivion? So Oblivion, game of the year, uh for its time. Uh, but it was, you know, that that's, I mean, 15 years at least, I'd say. Oblivion. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that was a long time ago. And as I've uh, learned from previous <laughs> editions of this segment, <laughs> gaming has, the, the, the audience for gaming has grew exponentially. So I'm going to say Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, I'm going to say Oblivion sold fewer than assassin's creed that my friend is correct excellent start it is a pretty excellent start it did sell fewer copies which is amazing it is when you fewer consider... copies, not less copies i can't get that grammar right higher or lower well, look, it's <laughs> it, yeah it's fine you know it's it's it, it you know higher or lower is a good <laughs> name for the segment i feel right you know, then. hopefully we won't be uh be found Alienate by the grammar police, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was shut, worrying. Get our podcast shut down <laughs> <laughs> for illegal activity. Yeah. Right then. Second game on the list is FIFA 22. A game people have a love-hate relationship with. Um, I can't imagine... Assassin's Creed having more sales than FIFA, so I'm gonna to have to go FIFA 22 
more sales, higher. That is correct. Excellent, two two. excellent. Right. Ding ding. We're uh, cooking with cooking with steam here. <laughs> oh, but are you cooking with gas? We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out on the next one. <laughs> and the next couple of questions. Yeah. Okay. So the next one is Diablo Three. Right. Blizzard game, obviously something I'm very familiar with. Oh yeah. I mean, Diablo is a massive franchise, and Diablo 3 is a fairly recent title, so I'm going to say Diablo 3, higher. Mate, you're on fire today. Oh, cooking, you are cooking, on fire. Cooking, three out baby. of three. Hell three out yeah. of three. It's looking good so far. You've already right. equaled your high score. I have. I have. With two, two to go. Two to go. Right, okay. Let's not do a Japan on penalties here. <laughs> Or Spain, actually. <laughs> we, we love those World Cup references at the moment. <laughs> uh, probably the last week of them. Yeah, yeah. After uh, we get knocked out on, in, on Saturday. <sighs> right. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Number four is Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, but I should specify... Yes, please. This is <laughs> the... Rebooted Star Wars Battlefront 2. The rebooted, okay. The recent one. So, tricky one. Um, Obviously, so, so is it still called Star Wars Battlefront 2, the one we played on the PS2? Yeah. Yeah, legendary game, and obviously they rebooted it. Um, Got a lot of hype about it. And um, a lot of criticism. A lot of criticism as well, yeah. It was With the microtransaction uh, yeah, yeah. problems. So, the pay to win thing i'm gonna say that assassin's creed i'm gonna say star wars battlefront lower sales than assassin's creed oh mate we could be on for a perfect oh! score today mate we really could oh this is that's smashing correct. all right that's correct four out of four. Oh baby oh i've got a thing you'll you'll get this yeah let's see shall we Let's see. The final one is Civilization VI. Civilization VI or More Assassin's or less Creed copies. Odyssey. I have a feeling that the Civilization uh, audience is, is, is bigger than the Assassin's Creed audience. That might be my slanted view. Ooh. But I'm going to say Civilization VI higher. Are you absolutely positive <laughs> about this? Yes. This is, that is, a, that is, there is a perfect record on the line here. That is my final answer. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you like want to phone be... a friend? <laughs> I feel like I'm one who wants to be a millionaire here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to phone a friend? No. Ask the audience? No. Nah, mate. No need. Higher. That, my friend, is correct. <laughs> that is five out of five. five. Oh. You love to see it. Congrats, mate. That's, oh, that's, my that's goodness. Top quality. Wow. I'd never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> Fair play. Fair play. Fantastic. Five, five, can't, can't disagree with that. That is the A star. Wow. Past the exam with flying colours. I saw Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And I was thinking to myself, this is going to be, you know, a tough one because it's a game I'm not that familiar with. But Yeah. Maybe I... I'd say maybe I selected easy answers, but I don't know. I think you've I think you've used good logic for all of them, really, yeah. and you drew on past experiences. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> mate. We we we're making mistakes and we're learning from them, you know, and yeah. we're improving. That's yeah, what as a good coach, about, you know. This, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yeah. so yeah, five out of five. Very nice audience. Can you Listeners, keep up with me? viewers? Yes. How did you get on? <laughs> Let us know, please. We'd be uh, really intrigued to know. Really fun segment that is. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, to keep that up. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. We will. We'll see if you can uh, retain that 100% record for next week. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Can I retain the title? Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. After although that was, I suppose you were relegated after the last episode. Right? <laughs> oh, we about two out of four, oh yeah. So, <laughs> so that, that, the that, that's the championship title, really. <laughs> Now you got to so, avoid yeah. relegation in the prim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right then, on to the main topic of the podcast. Ash, mate. 
What has happened to Saints Row? Good question. Honestly, I have no idea. I, I, it has gone for me just. It's gone more than downhill. It's gone down into a ditch. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Fell down the drain into the sewers for me. That's not a terrible way to put it, to be honest with you, man. Yeah, like, oh, I just, I, I remember the days of, of, of two, the, the, the glory days. It was just such a phenomenal game with such an amazing story and such great characters. But what has happened, Brahma? So I think we should start with. We'll do a bit of a timeline here. Go from Sanctuary One all the way to the reboot. Yeah. Quickly talk about them and and how things kind of. Um, regressed i said uh, i guess sorry um but first we we want to quickly mention obviously it's it's a fairly prevalent topic right now because a recently volition who uh, you know the developer of the game um is owned by embracer and embracer have made the decision to merge volition with gearbox after the fallout of the saints row reboot game because obviously they've they've seen the the negative criticisms, the, the the bad feedback, and and such, and they they don't feel like they can trust Volition anymore. Then they're, they're not going to trust them to to make its own decisions. The developers, the development team, and the producers, etc. And so they've merged them, merged them with Gearbox. So that has put the future of the Saints Row franchise in doubt. I think it's fair to say. Will they continue with it now? Particularly now they're not getting kind of final say. Um. It's tough. What do you what do you reckon? It's Ash? What an do you, interesting what do you time, isn't it? But m- man, I think like a Saints Row Two reboot or a Saints Row One reboot would just be like that. That would get get so the sales would be well. Well, well I think. we 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 should specify here a, a Saints Row a remake or oh, a yeah, remaster. Yeah, yeah, probably not not a reboot. Yeah, a re- yeah, like remastered. Yeah, exactly. Something along those lines. Just um, improved graphics. Fix some of the, like the the game the dated gameplay. Uh, same story though, uh, same characters. It, like basically the same game, but just modernized. That's that's yeah. that's what I'm saying. So that, that's something I, I want to actually get into a little bit later when we talk about the reboot. Um, so hold your thoughts on that. Yes, but yes, yes, well, yes I agree. Um, you know, so yeah, obviously the the game is in is in doubt now. The future of the franchise. Fans have been polarised by the game, um, not only by the game, but by the dev studio who kind of challenged them on social media. We'll talk about that a bit more later when we come to the reboot. But, you know, we want to go all the way back to Saints Row 1 first and talk about that. You know, kind of, with regard to Saints Row 1, I, I'll admit, and I, I don't know if you were the same, Ash, I played Saints Row 2 before playing Saints yeah, Row 1. I don't I'll, even know if you've I'm played exactly Saints Row 1. I have played yeah. Saints Row 1. Um, yeah. It was a bit of a tough play because just because yes. I think it's so dated, really. One hundred percent. Yeah, the thing is with it is that it's it's yeah, so it's not breathtaking. Obviously, because we're playing it a lot further into the future, we notice how dated it is, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, obviously, when we played Saints Row Two, I think it was like what was it like when we played? It was like oh nine, two thousand and ten. Obviously, the game had come out in two thousand eight, so it, it wasn't technology already, hadn't advanced as already as yeah yeah already far, playing a dated so, already playing a dated game at that point and having yeah. to go back after we played saints row 2 to saints row yeah. 1 which is even more dated than that it was it's always going to be sort of a, a shock to the system i think yeah yeah um so there is that but with regards to the kind of the game itself it, it set the scene for the saints it set the kind of the characters the scene um, the setting of um, of uh, Stillwater, which is the city, and it it did that go- a decent job of of laying those foundations. You can definitely see things translating. Yeah, very well, and you, you get a sense of yeah. like the the culture of the Saints, right? And you you get to know like what the gang's about. As yeah. you say, some of the characters, like the dialogue and storytelling, is still really strong. Um, yeah, it's just uh, obviously. Just because it's so dated, as we've said, like the gameplay just holds it back a bit. But it's a good game, solid game. And then obviously you had those humour elements as well, which Saints Row Two has been known for. Like it even you know, that really set the scene with that as well. Yeah, there was a yeah. lot of a lot of funny funny stuff going down in that. Um, and so 
Yeah, not too much to say about Sancho 1, because really, the king of the pile is, is this next one. Leads into Saints Row 2. Saints Row 2. Oh, I the mean, goat of Saints Row. Yeah, yeah, Phenomenal. 100%. I mean, I remember you, <laughs> I mean, we've spoken about this before, but you showed me this game, <laughs> you know, and obviously I've been, I'm around at yours playing it, and I'm just thinking, oh, this is just so much fun. So yeah. much fun. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it's, it's the, uh, it was the best balance between, like, uh, I mean, we'll get onto it this more, but it's 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 always been a balance between like being a grounded gangster game and like a sandbox free like you can do whatever you want game. Yeah. And for me, I think this was the perfect balance of the two. Yeah. Where you had like realistic characters that you wanted to invest your time in and and you know do missions for. You had brilliant gang um, identities, like all three. I can. But I can visualize right now, like all three and all the characters, because they were so well done. And obviously, you had yeah. a storyline which each, with each of these gangs, which were brilliant. They were brilliantly written, brilliantly executed, and and yeah, you just had the uh, the um, uh, progression of taking over the map piece by piece, like as your gang, the Saints, obviously, like take back territory. And it was just such a good experience, like just everything, story, you had that sense of progression. It was just such a good game and you're just having just complete, you know, fun the whole way through. Yeah. Um, no, it was just a phenomenal game, man. Yeah. And, and, and obviously at this point, a lot of comparisons to GTA are, are coming in um, and they're trying to, which is probably a thing we're going to discuss throughout all of these games. They're trying to differentiate themselves from GTA. They're trying to release games that doesn't feel like a GTA clone. They want to get away from that. But I think that there's a clear distinction between the two because one, in GTA, you don't have this progression, as you mentioned, of the territories. You know, you're taking over the territories of the city one by one. Um, You didn't have the multiplayer, which was uh, GTA still doesn't have this now in the it, it essentially had a, a co-op campaign an online campaign um because you can load up the world with in a like say with your friends a lobby with your friends and you can just do all the missions and all the activities together and that's something that GTA still doesn't have to this day which is massive particularly in 2008 that's huge and so there are a lot of things that this game does actually did better than Grand Theft Auto, and I think they were well on the way at this point to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to <laughs> <laughs> to um, you know, separate it from GTA, but still, you've got something as you said, uh, an element of that grounded gang game, yeah, and you know that element of um, fun and kind of what's the word i'm looking for a little bit far-fetched and stuff it, it had a good balance as you say yeah exactly and you know there's only so much you can change like there's there's different games in the rts genre for for example that just have like different units because and as long as you have that usp you have a a, a, a place in that genre yeah and they didn't they don't have to like focus on right what can we change from gta we can change this and we can be different and we can be different you you only need yeah. a couple of things that are different like the yeah. gangs and the story i think are kind of enough to separate you from gta like the story being amazing and mm-hmm. the 100%. the gang system and progression that's enough they had a hundred other things well, obviously the gameplay is a little bit different and you've got this like uh, fun element and stuff but even just if you had those two things that's enough and i think I don't know, maybe um, something that contributed to this, this franchise going off course is like focusing too much on trying to be different and trying to separate yeah. themselves from the pack when you don't 100%. need to do that. 100%. And I think like also, um, basically with regards to the, kind of what you alluded to, um, like a lot, if, if they're part of the same genre, a lot of the elements are going to be the same aren't they exactly you just yeah. can't get away from that as you mentioned with the first person shooter games like you know comparing cod to battlefield for example 
you know, like when you think about it, a lot of the elements are the same. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, obviously you might have different time periods. You've got different things like one has to create a class and the other one has the, um, like the pre-made classes and, and all that stuff. And you, know, you might have slightly different controls and that, but generally a lot of the elements are the same. So you, you're not really going to get away from that, are you? No, exactly. But, you know, Battlefield has their USP in that it's more large-scale combat. Call of Duty have their, like, more close close quarters. And they don't feel the need to, like, oh, right, well, uh, it say you're in the Battlefield studios and you're saying, like, you know, um, right, well, Call of Duty does this, so let's do this instead. You don't need to do yeah. that. You don't need to do yeah. that. Let, let's, t- let's turn the regular guns into laser guns so we're not like Call of Duty. No. Right? You don't have to change everything. You've got your USP, right? Like, you've got a place in that genre, in the FPS genre, where people buy your game. You don't yeah. need to keep making differences and keep making yourself separate. You're just doing too much at that point. I think it's fair to say that at this point, Saints Row is, is enjoying, it, you know, a really good spell. Yeah, you know, it's on time, top of yeah. the world, really. It could be the really, peak, really. yeah, yeah. Um, not in terms of sales, you know, the, the latter games did sell more, but I think that's based on the kind of the foundations of Saints Row Two. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah precisely. Um, so we come into Saints Row Three next. Now, m- me and you, we have different opinions here, and I know any of the listeners who've um played Saints Row Three will. will Probably be a bit, a little bit polarized by that themselves. Um, for me, I didn't like Sancho Three. I was not a fan at all. Um, with Sancho Three, it's important to note that at this point, as I've found out in my research, only one fifth of the dev team from Sancho Two remained. So eighty percent of the developers are fresh. They haven't worked on Sancho Two. And I think now knowing that, that explains a lot because those two games are, for me, almost completely different. Completely different. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. With Saints Row 3, after you've kind of taken over the city in Saints Row 2 um, and challenged Altor and, and kind of removed all the, the kind of rival gangs and stuff, uh, you start going, I guess, international. Um, now. It's important to note it's not just it's not just this. What you have in Saints Row Three is you have a massive time jump. There's five years in between each game. That for me does kind of alienate me a little bit. I'm not a big fan of time jumps in in any form of media really. Um, and you've got a new setting as well, just randomly a new city. You're not in Stillwater anymore. You're in a random city, you've merged with Altor, which was kind of the corporation that you challenge in the first place that basically were like a private police force mixed with a, a whole bunch of other things it didn't make sense because you eventually you killed their leader in Sancho 2 sorry spoilers um and you know you basically just destroyed the company really um now you're and so with them. <laughs> you are and now you're merging with them <laughs> yeah 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 exactly that that to me that didn't make sense and you were like you know, I remember, like, I didn't own this one. I played this at yours, mm. like, which was how alienated I was. I remember playing through the story at yours. Yeah. And so it, it, it really did alienate me, and it was so, so different. And this is where I think it starts to kind of tail out a little bit. But you, obviously, you kind of had different feelings about this. You enjoyed it a bit more. So, yeah, I, well, I'd say you strongly disliked it, right? Would that is that what you, would you yeah, say yeah, it's stronger yeah. Yeah, or would I, you say like weaker words no, about that? No, I'd, I'd yeah, I'd say I, I strongly disliked you didn't it. You yeah. hate it, you strongly disliked it. Yeah, I would say I liked it. I would say I loved Saints Row Two, and I would say I liked Saints Row Three. Yeah, um, it's got a really strong start. I remember, um, like you're thrown into the action, right? You're firstly robbing a bank, then like yeah. you. Um, you get caught essentially well even before that i'm talking about the mission like you you um get a helicopter you blow off the safe and then you're flying around on the on the safe that's hanging from a helicopter 
shooting like the the SWAT SWAT teams. Like I thought that was an awesome mission. Then yeah, as you say, you get caught. You're on a plane, um, and then some like some epic scenes of you like flying through the plane. Again, all this is quite far fetched, but that's like always been a theme for the Saints Row games. Um, and I remember uh, a mission as well, taking a penthouse. So you you airdrop in. It's got power by Kanye West as the as the theme music. I don't know if you ever played yeah. this mission, um, but them them three missions in particular. I, I would say I really enjoyed. Apart from that, it's quite a forgettable game, really. And there was just uh, little things that pushed the I balance. Mean, well, I should, sorry, since I should just no, say, sure. like, I don't want you to feel under pressure that, um, like, because obviously I don't like it that you, you can't like if if you enjoyed it. I want you to say like you enjoyed it, like. No, you know, I'm, like, I'm I'm gonna be you know honest about. Yeah, yeah. My, I know. Just so it's I will clear, say, you know. yeah, yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed those missions, um, but I think because I, I tried replaying it a couple of uh, months ago, and yeah. again really enjoyed those missions. And then the missions after that are a bit sort of I don't know, just meh. Um, I probably didn't think this at the time, um, but yeah, like after that, the story just like gets a bit same. I think a couple of cool ones like I think you you hack. Um, I'm using my long-term memory for this, so it's very, very vague. Um, but you have to like hack um, the the cyber like goths, which is one of the gangs. I thought the gangs were quite good. There's like the Mexicans, the uh, these French people. Yeah, you had the and... the like Mexican wrestler inspired yeah. gangs in your um, like the cyber hackers. Yeah, and then you had the 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 same guys that took took you in the first place the uh, yeah. the lexors or something um but you see through the game that uh this balance between a grounded game and and just a bit silly definitely tips in the little bit silly like i don't know if you remember one of the weapons that you get early is the massive I'm not gonna um, say the sex toy are you? the sex toy yeah yeah Which, using <laughs> that just feels a bit like oh this is a bit too much you know this is just a bit like you know ruining my immersion a bit yeah um and then you had like the the brutes which were like these hulk hulk built guys which is a bit like again <laughs> am i playing a gang game or am i playing like a superhero game like which yeah is it? um so definitely like you know they're treading a, a fine line with the saints row games but with this, there was a lot of a uh, lot of fun to be had for sure. I loved all the like the planes and the over top stuff, uh, over the top stuff, yeah. which are the good. You kind of into that, like with the blimps and stuff like that. Yeah, the, and and yeah. The, the planes and I thought the aircrafts were really really cool, and some of the weapons you got were really really cool, um, and some of them didn't just completely ruin your immersion, like a jet plane. That I mean, there's that in uh, in GCO, right? That like things like yeah. that don't ruin your immersion. But some of them, for me, I think they just went a bit too far, like with the sex toy and with like the the brutes. And uh, yes, some of like the there's like a DJ sound wave emitter that just felt really like, you know, unrealistic to use. Um, And so I guess they're questioning their identity, right? Because Saints Row 2, I feel like I had a clear identity. Uh, Saints Row 3. They're kind of. It feels like a identity crisis in a way, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, are we yeah, this 100%. silly, mad game where you know nothing matters, but it's just like, whoa, what's happening? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Or, yeah, that's where it really starts toying with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or are we a, a gang game, which there's still you know gang elements? Yeah. And then, I mean, do you, do you have anything else to say? Or well, like in Saints Row Two, it, it's still more. It's a gritty gang game for me. With those elements of, you know, kind of fun, humour, a little bit over yeah. the top, like some of the activities and stuff over the top. Um, but they're only activities, they're kind of side missions and stuff. So as I go anyway, in Saints Row 3, it, it abandons those roots of the gritty gang game, which I really like, because all of a sudden, everyone is like a pop idol. Like, you're, I remember one mission... Like you, you're like robbing the bank. It might even be the first mission. I can't remember. You're like robbing mm-hmm. something, um, or shooting somewhere up, and 
like someone on the street, some random person, he's like, oh, can I get a selfie? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, come on, man. Yeah, like, this, I mean, this, the selfie thing, yeah, is, is a bit silly. I do, I did like the uh, idea of a gang going international and having like so much power that they yeah. like have TV adverts and they have brand deals and stuff like that. Well, did, yeah, because they were like they became like a media company, didn't they? Like, yeah, essentially, yeah, I did like that. But you still, you've obviously still got to have the gritty bits alongside that. It can't just yeah. all be glamour and and uh, you know soda, you know pop adverts, yeah, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, like identity crisis is the summary I think of Saints Row Three, right? Which, yeah, because I found out in my research for this episode that the original plan for Saints Row 3 was that they were going to have an undercover agent infiltrate the Saints um, and it was going to be more of a choice-driven game. Okay, that, that sounds, well, almost the opposite to what they actually came out with. So Yeah, so I am there. absolutely devastated that we, I cannot believe we did not get that game because that sounds so good to me. For Saints Row 3, that is, for me, the natural evolution of Saints Row 2, where you've taken over the city. Like, what's next? You can either go one way, which is the way they went, which is, let's go international, let's all hell will break loose, blah, blah, blah. Or f- or they, the other way, where it's like, ah, oh, trying to maintain that power, can, you know, try, people trying to bring us down and stuff. And obviously you have this choice-driven adventure, which is like moving with the technology, really and the direction of games, and they just kind of abandoned that. And I, that was, I was really gutted when I heard that, to be honest. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. Is that Saints so, Row 3? Yeah, I mean, Saints it was well-received. It was yeah, well-received. So, I, I, like, I do think it has its good points, uh, definitely. But I, th- I, definitely I think see... I'm probably yeah. in a minority, to be honest, the people who, who are these kind of alienated. Mm, yeah. Um. And then we come on to Saints Row 4, which, which also had a lot of favourable reviews. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people enjoyed it. But this one, it, it just... Oh, it does... <laughs> goes way too it, far. but just hated it. Yeah, absolutely hated it. So, so, so yeah, so you played it. Because I, I, I'm going to say right now, and I'm going to admit to the listeners, I didn't play this one because I was that like, with the premise, which we'll talk about shortly, I was that kind of disgusted with it that i was like there's just no way i'm ever touching this game yeah well i mean you know i did enjoy saints row 3 and i thought saints row 4 uh yeah i was a bit iffy on, on the premise but i was like oh surely i'll get some you know enjoyment out of it it's like hopefully some i don't know gangs will uh rise to take me down and i, I was hoping to go back to my roots but you you, you go into saints row 4 suddenly you're the president of the United States. <laughs> like you gone from a gang shooting homeless people to take over some abandoned church in Saints Row to <laughs> to uh yeah, president to of the, the uh to the president of the country. Like, and already I'm thinking, what on earth is this? And then before you know it, aliens are invading and <laughs> the roots of this game are just rotten and have withered away and <laughs> something else has, has been born this this for me unenjoyable piece of rubbish honestly oh, it's just there's no real story to it it's just yeah mad it's just a shooter mad shooters oh, yeah. yeah mad shooter you know um no i could not get behind it at all at all I mean, uh, as we put, we kind of put in our notes, like the gameplay might be decent, and again, this was kind of reviewed favourably, so it must have, like, you know, the shooting mechanics and stuff must have been good I mean, and stuff. I mean, they're all right, but Saints Row's never really, that's never been Saints Row, Row's thing, has it? Like, you never. No, it's, no, it's not been a strength. No, 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 no. So if that's no, like, not. if that's like what you're relying on, like, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. Um. So still, yeah, like, it's it, still got humor elements, I guess, and it's still like funny. Well, but yeah. I don't get too how. Funny, bro. Yeah, I don't get how you can stay engaged with that storyline when it's just that stupid. And you see, the thing is, like, the problem with it is for me, it doesn't belong in the same franchise. That be a gang game and being president, that does not, 
they don't equate basically you know there is no correlation there that this should not this should be a different game this should be a new franchise yeah altogether. exactly yeah if you want to be president and shoot loads of aliens and have this mad shooter and stuff yeah fine that should not be a saints row game in my opinion i agree i agree and i think it's kind of like i mean I i've never watched this series but i've heard about it you ever heard of riverdale the netflix series yeah and you, have you heard it. about the kind of twist about how well i've just heard about how stupid it is so like... so in the first series apparently it's like a a teen you know a regular kind of american teen series you know they're all kind of i think like 18 17 years old and stuff mm. someone i think either gets murdered or goes missing um and that's what it's about I see the fallout from that. Right. So just the, the, one of those general kind of uh, kind Solving of dark the mystery. Yeah. teen series. Yeah. In, I think, season five, they find out that all of a sudden they've all got superpowers and they're superheroes. Mm. And yeah. uh, they're like all of a sudden, yeah, just out of nowhere. It's no longer this, this kind of teen, you know, gritty mystery thing. It's like everyone's a superhero now. It's exactly um, like that, isn't it? Yeah. And that is, it is like that, isn't it? It is perfect. It is 100% exactly like that. Why they felt the need to transition, that's why I said about like wanting to be two different from GTA. Is that the yeah. the driver behind this, like this change? Are they just, they looked at Saints Row 2 and thought, this is too similar. Let's change it a bit. Okay, that went well, went, uh, went down well. Let's change it even more. And yeah. then, you know, is that the reason why? Because I just, it boggles my mind, honestly, why they continue to just do a complete 180. Yeah. And then we had the the, the spin-off, Get Out of Hell. Oh, ridiculous, you know? yeah. Again, which wasn't so, well-received, actually, really. Again, like, uh, spoiler alert, but one of the characters, Gat, dies in Saints Row 3. Then... Randomly comes back as a ghost. Yeah. For this gat out of hell thing. Does it make sense? No. Ugh. But that's Saints Row for you at this point. Yeah. And so, yeah, so that's massive to me. Like, just story it is a big thing for me. Um, and I, I don't like this. No. Just baffling storytelling, to be honest. Baffling. Um, Perfect word for it, yeah. So... Then there's a big gap. There's a huge hiatus. And then all of a sudden... Until now. <laughs> this year. <laughs> yep. Yeah, 2021 comes along. And uh, we get a announcement trailer. St. Rose getting a reboot. Okay. I, uh, I remember I was in a bar at Resorts World. And, uh, and the trailer was announced. And I was actually there with Will Tyman, who actually, okay. strange enough, obviously plays the games with me, played yeah, Saints Row 2 yeah. with me. And I remember us both watching it and being like, what the f*** is this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Literally. Yeah, I looked at it and I was like, what on, is this Saints Row? Really? And I looked at it and I, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. No. I was absolutely baffled by this. And it... Turns out other people were as well because the trailer got more dislikes than likes. Well, there you go. That just says everything, doesn't it? Never Honestly. a good sign, is it? Never a good sign, no. So, obviously, people aren't particularly excited about this. It gets multiple delays, which, you know, always tell you the game is, is a long way off. Mm. And then it comes out and you realise it should have been delayed even more. It's a bug ridden mess. It's repetitive. It's boring. Lots of people unfavorably reviewing it, I think, to say the least. Just a, a whole lot of criticism. And I think the general consensus is that uh, amongst all of the technical issues, of which there were many, with regards to the game itself, it lost its identity. It lost that Saints Row identity. Um, there was, you know, listen, I mean, we're not. <laughs> We're not going to get all political and stuff. But yeah. there was a lot of talk about it going, in inverted commas, woke. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what people were trying to get at... Now, I haven't played a game. I've only watched kind of gameplay and stuff. And I know you haven't played it either, Ash. Nope. Um, 
generally what people are saying is that it lost the identity of which anyone could be offended. Like they could offend, they'd offend anyone and anything. Mm. And I love that. And I think GTA has been the the same. I love that just no one is off limits. Nothing is off limits. Mm. And it seems like in this one, they were... They've gone safe, have they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have... There was a lot of talk. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't want to get into that sort of too much. No, no, no. But the point is, they've been criticised by people who think it's gone more of a safe route when it was never that before. It was no. always risque comedy and jokes about anyone and everything and not worried about offending people. Yeah, precisely. And, um, yeah, like obviously it got a lot of criticism. And the dev team, they doubled down. They doubled down because they got into it with fans on Twitter, challenging them when they made complaints about the game, complaints about the direction. They weren't having it. And... Yeah, fair enough. You stand your ground, whatever. Um, but as a result, you they polarized fans. They really did, and so it didn't help the reception of the game. Really didn't. Um, what are your thoughts on? I know obviously you didn't you didn't follow it too much, really. Um, no, I think, yeah. After Sandro Four, I was just done with the the, the yeah. whole series. I've seen little gameplay videos here and there. I mean, I think. Uh, you know, it introduced the characters and they're, they're college students and they turn to crime to pay for their tuition fees. Like, what <laughs> the, you know, I just really want to swear. <laughs> Basically, like, just ridiculous, the whole premise behind it. Feel free to, man. I mean, I've already done it once, so I'll have uh, to yeah, sense the fact. I, I, I don't want to get in the habit of it. That's the problem. <laughs> no, me neither. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just ridiculous. Gameplay looks nothing special at all and you know i don't expect that from saints row games what you know i'd expect if these last two games didn't come out is you know good story good characters and you know fun fun gameplay yeah, but fun no, gameplay, it doesn't have to but... it doesn't have to blow it, you away you just exactly to, yeah. it's not the the pinpoint of the game you know no it just needs to be fun and uh and you know free <laughs> yeah. um but yeah, it just looks dead, man. And yeah, it just reinforced my negativity with the franchise, to be honest, mate. And yeah, that brings us to today, where we don't know what the future of the franchise is, but... If there is a future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I honest. mean, there has to be, surely. Because, like, ultimately, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a famous franchise. It, it, it's successful, you know, numbers-wise. And obviously the early game successful critically. So, you know, I don't see why they'd leave that on the table, really. I mean, I'm telling you, like, if they went back to their roots, they remastered <laughs> uh, 2 yeah. or 1. That would, get, that would get so many people hyped and so many people, you know, buying. Get so much revenue from that. And then move from there, maybe, you know, reinvigorate the franchise back to its I roots. Mean, this is it, like you've literally stolen the words out of my mouth. I think rather than this reboot, what we needed and what I think people wanted was a remake, Saints Row 1, Saints Row 2, and just go from there. You know, and even like, I, I know you kind of said like, you don't have to change anything story wise and stuff. Just kind of touch it up, you know, graphically and stuff. I think they could do stuff that like, if it was a proper remake, um, I think they could make make tweaks and stuff and and changes if they wanted to, um, because it could lead into like a fresh kind of remake of the entire series. But ultimately, just just yeah, again, bring it into twenty twenty two. You know, um, I will, I just would be worried about them going too off piece. To be honest, yeah, I know like, what you mean. I, I mean, they... yeah, I, I can't afford that. As I was saying, out like, do we <laughs> trust these guys to kind of? Judging by recent writing. Exactly. Like, look what yeah, they've done in the true. past. Like, just stick to basics. Let's yeah. just make the game again, but modernise, and then we'll go from there, you know. Yeah. Then, so, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's what I think we wanted. That's what people wanted. That's all I see now when I'm, I look on the social media and stuff of Saints Row 2, just people asking about kind of remasters and remakes for them. I remember when the actual game was announced people like oh yes this is a re- remaster of Saints Row 1 
and they had to keep replying to these tweets Volition did and saying no this is a reboot this is not Saints Row 1 there is no Saints Row 1 in the um, pipeline blah 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 and so it's clear this is what people wanted you yeah. just completely ignored it's amazing them. how much developers will, will uh, how much effort they'll put in to not listen to their customers yeah <laughs> like it's them, these are the guys paying for your games and they're telling you what they want and they're telling you I will pay for this and they just don't they never do it yeah literally oh, what is going on so yeah I think overall kind of culminating the decline of the Saints Row franchise it lost its identity didn't it for one yeah 100% I think it struggled with what its identity was Saints Row yeah. 3 the identity crisis yeah yeah you know, it, it was too much about let's try and be different to GTA and not let's build on what we have and improve that and fine-tune it. it. Yeah, I mean, perhaps there's an element of, if we've read the reboot, an element of, you know, it, it well, let's just say it, it, they've stopped offending some sections of, you know, society. They've gone safe with their comedy when they were always risking it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll put it that way. Um, yeah, and obviously, I think, as we mentioned in Saints Row 3, like, they lost 80% of the original dev team. Always going to be a massive shift, isn't there, when mm. that happens? Yeah. So, yeah, I think I, it'll be interesting to see what happens from here. Now, obviously, we've had this move of, of Volition merging with, with Gearbox, Embracer taking, uh, um, you know, taking control of the situation. We'll see, won't we? We'll see. Yeah, we'll definitely keep an eye out because, you know, always the opportunity we, we for redemption. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's never an eye over. And what, I mean, what would you like to see now? Is that what you'd, we want? Do we want remake of Central 1 and 2? Do we want just kind of a fresh reboot but with a new team and nah, like, see if they do something different? I like... wouldn't trust a complete reboot, to be honest. I mean, I'd I'd have a look, but it would be... Difficult to get my attention with, with you know, like a different game. I think what I'd like to see is a remaster Centro 1 and sort of a commitment to going back in that direction. Yeah. And then after that, what I'd like to see is a new series of games with sort of uh, the same gameplay mechanics, the game, same visuals, but maybe different characters. Maybe yeah. start, start off a new series, new gangs. Because obviously uh, the Saints, you've done, you know, them at the highest point of their you know i mean the gang yeah. leaders may president for goodness sake yeah right. <laughs> leader so, of the universe next yeah i guess sure like turns into no man's sky <laughs> yeah <laughs> ridiculous but yeah like I'd, I'd like to see a new new characters a new gang but just with the the saints row dna like yeah. at its base at its core yeah. So yeah, I'd love. So that. yeah, that rounds it off. I think for our yeah. Saints Row tour, I think we've uh, yeah, I feel like my blood pressure's slowly decreasing. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back to normal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's good to get that one off our chest. That's one I've I don't know about you. I've wanted to do that for a while, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I feel like a weight has just been lifted. Yeah. from doing this podcast, honestly. Yeah, is that's it, been a like, good one. I know we've said it a million times, but this 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 is a real massive game from our childhood, and it's just crazy how how it just went straight Goes down to the part. toilet. Yeah, yeah. Um, really disappointing. Yeah. Hmm. I know. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Yeah. And uh, until then, I guess just play the dated Sancho one and two games. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, next on the agenda, we want to do our regular segment of Why You Should Play. Each week, myself and Ash will uh, suggest a game that you should try if you haven't done so already. And this week, Ash, I'm going to throw it over to you. What do we think the audience members should play? So, today, you should play Cities Skylines. Ooh. So a game that's sort of based on a real uh, historical game, SimCity. It was uh, the main game of the genre for ages, but this game came along, did everything better, and now it is the king. 
Yeah. So I'm and sure the city you can builder sort of, genre. Exactly, as the city builder genre. So I'm sure most of you can sort of figure out what kind of game it is, but you sort of start off with a fresh landscape with a motorway that's coming in one road and literally uh you can go in whatever direction you want. This is your city. You you build houses, so you, you've got to make a residential area where all your people are gonna live. You've got to make an industrial area where people are going to make things and you've got to make like a commercial zone, like a high street. And it's so... Uh, you've got to obviously what... link it up. Water, gas, electric. Exactly, all that good stuff. Sewer system. Yep. You've got to dump your poo somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's it's got... I mean, this is what the a, a city builder uh, is at its core, but also it's just got so much like depth like you get updates from uh they've got like a twitter a unique twitter thing right where you can see tweets from the local yeah residents of course yeah of, yeah of their thoughts on your city yeah uh <laughs> and then i'm pretty sure you can you can instantly click on that tweet and then it focuses in on on that person, person. and where they are which is crazy which is crazy yeah because yeah. you can have like thousands and tens of thousands of people even more living in your city at once and all of these people have their own name and you click on them and it tells you what they're doing their name where they live all this information i mean how they've managed to do that it's insane it's so good so cool um yeah just a, a brilliant like relaxing city builder strategy game with enormous um, depth as well yeah absolutely. as we kind of alluded to yeah you know, you can have football stadiums in it, and it 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 it, it will um, what's the word? It will kind of include the fact that obviously you've got all the the traffic build up on match days and stuff like that, and the congestion, and you've got to obviously manage that, haven't you? Yeah, which is yeah, traffic traffic management can be super yeah. super satisfying. I find it super satisfying myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it has an active modding community, which is massive. It is massive, yeah. Because so, like, some of the mods really do vastly improve the game even more. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it just shows that how much people have love for the game, because it's it's really so much going on in the in the modding community over there, isn't there? Yeah, and it's um it's on Game Pass. So anyone who's on Xbox or PC got Game Pass, you can play it. It is now on. It is on all consoles, isn't it now? I believe so, yeah, I believe yeah. so. Which is big. I've never played it on console, so I don't know how different how it feels. Works. Obviously, yeah. it will feel weird not using a mouse and keyboard for me on, on this kind of mm. uh, builder genre. Um, but for anyone who, who obviously maybe doesn't have a, a powerful enough PC, I'd say with regards to the PC, it's weird, isn't it? Because at, at first, you don't need a, a, you know, a high-end PC, but obviously, as you build the city out, it does start to get more demanding, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. As as you add sort of depth and, and more people yeah. join, obviously it's yeah. more demanding because uh, yeah. more more more's going on. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, as I've said, for all all for every person, they've got information. So there's there's a lot of information to load. Um, so it can be can be quite demanding, to be fair. Yeah. Um, but I think if you've got you know a, a decent PC, it should be it should run okay. Yeah. Yeah. It'll run far. Um. So yeah, City Skylines, the Sim City Killer. Really, Sim City Killer. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean they're they're not supporting that game anymore, are they? Yeah, because <laughs> they've no. they've truly uh, lost the top spot in that genre, oh, haven't yeah. they? Absolutely, yeah. No, so, City Skylines, brilliant game. Get, gotta give it a go yeah. for sure. Yeah, give it a try, everyone, and uh, and let us know. So then, on to what we have been playing to round off the podcast now. Uh, I'll be honest, Ashes is a bit more exciting than me. So, <laughs> I don't um, know about you. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's a bit more different, I guess. Yeah. Do you want to start? Or shall I? Yeah, I can start. Yeah. So Go I've been him. playing, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure the last three games I've mentioned have been like indie games. Which is um, cool. It's good. I love it. Yeah. I, I mean, I love these indie games. They've all got different, you know, different little things about them and uh, obviously fair price. And I just love how, you know, the developer's mentality compared to, you know, teams like EA and stuff. Um, so this week I've been playing an indie game called Forager. 
now. Any fan, fans of Minecraft, uh, this would probably be a good game for you, to be fair. Um, so you start off one lonely island, and you've got, uh, you're armed with a, a mine pick, and that's it. And uh, obviously, the first thing you've got to do is mine, right? <laughs> So you see, it's it's kind of uh, from rags rags to riches sort of idea. So uh, as you mine, um, you got gold, iron. You build items. Uh, you can make coins for wealth. Where you can buy more land. You can expand. You get uh, creatures attacking your structures. You can make factories. Eventually, you can make drones that help you. It eventually, I mean <clears throat> the. The level of progression is crazy because you, obviously you start with a, a pick and nothing um, and you get, you, you know, you're burning stuff in the furnace with coal and eventually you're making nuclear power plants with like, you know, mm. it's, 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 it's mad the progression and how much there is to, to invest your time in. Obviously kind there's a leveling that, um, system. Eight bit feel to it, hasn't it? With Stardew Valley. Yes. Yeah, it's got that. I think I think it's a lovely, really yep. well done art style. Personally, I mean, it probably looks a bit childish to some people, but I think it looks. I think it's a great looking game. The music's really nice and peaceful. Like you just feel so chilled. <laughs> it looks um, like the sort of game that would bang on the Nintendo Switch. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which is on, it is that. on the Nintendo Switch, I believe. So it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like, like that Stardew Valley feel. Really, like you're just going around your your little i guess you could call it a farm i mean it's more like a you know your your city i guess it turns into yeah. eventually really because you can build like markets where you can buy items and there's so much you can do there's banks i, I could talk about it for ages because there's <laughs> so much but uh but yeah at its core you know you're, you're slowly building up your your city you've got enemies you've got dungeons to delve in as well so many yep. different play, little you know uh, play styles and uh, different things to do fantastic game would highly recommend to anyone who who likes that sort of that sort of thing some questions about the uh developer wasn't there that we just <laughs> uncovered <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely so not much that we know about we don't know much about it you know. no no but uh i mean i notice every time i log on to, i'll log into game um there's uh there's sort of like a mate there's a picture of this of this this developer right hot frog oh really yeah and he's he, he, it's like obviously it's uh well i guess it's him trying to big up himself i guess and yeah. be like look i'm the main man and <laughs> uh yeah we've seen some news stories of him not uh not treating his employees great right yeah supposedly we don't know um, it sounds like a right messy situation it does yeah yeah i mean i mean yeah so if obviously if that does kind of anyone who that will kind of impact. I know I've obviously I mentioned to you that I didn't buy I bought Lego Star Wars second hand because of how Telltale treated their works and stuff. If that matters to you then obviously we advise you yeah, do your own research beforehand and look exactly. into it before you do make your, your own research conclusions. And yeah, ex- exactly. Take your own uh Yeah. Take your own op- opinion on on what you read cuz uh, you know all, all I've really read is is, you know, uh him and the workers having a spat. Well, yeah, and you, you, there's no real like hard information, right? It's just people's yeah. opinions, and obviously, those are going to be biased if you've just been sacked or or whatever. So, yeah, it's um, so yeah, we don't really know. <laughs> yeah, we don't really know the situation, but definitely something's you know, there's some friction between between him and uh, his workforce. So, yeah. it, it does sound like he's trying to uh, claim um, responsibility for more than he should. Uh, yeah. and not giving his workers enough sort of praise so yeah well uh you know you you take your own sort of opinion on it um but we're just yeah letting you know basically but yeah there we go so yeah forager forager yeah yeah now how cheap is it uh just having a look 14.99 on steam exactly. so not too bad not too bad at all so, Broma, So, I would like to ask you, what have you been playing this week, mate? So, a bit of a boring one for the audience members this week. <sighs> uh, I've just been hopping in between World of Warcraft with the new Dragonflight expansion and Madden. Um, okay. Just kind of when I get the chance. It, the, well, the best thing about, about these two games in particular is why I've kind of been playing right now is you can kind of just hop in 
for you know like 20 minutes or whatever um when you kind of get the chance and stuff yeah you're not it's very committed for games. a long time right yeah yeah exactly um you know world of warcraft dragonflight obviously you spoke about that last week because obviously you've been playing it as well so i, I won't loving it. say too much about that but yeah just loving loving the expansion yeah still no still no negative points um not massively not massively oh, um stuff. i mean obviously well obviously there's always something there's always things that they can improve on um but like like there was a bit well yeah like there, there's a bit where you obviously you you have this conflict between Sabalian and um yeah conflict between two sort uh, of Raphion. allies. yeah yeah dragons. and i was like playing that i was kind of like oh i wish we could have the choice Mm. Um, to pick between them, yeah, and you actually do, you actually do as part of a world quest. You can pick which one to support. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because cool. I, I was kind of like, oh wow, okay. Um, and it's good, it's like world quest and stuff. But then it doesn't really go far beyond that. And I just think it's time now for for World of Warcraft to like, you know, take Evolve. that kind of thing to yeah. next level, add a bit more choice and stuff. So there is that and stuff, but generally just obviously really enjoying the expansion. So with Madden, obviously not very exciting for the listeners. Um just kind of going on the franchise mode and stuff, but um you know, it's something that we've me being a big NFL fan, I kind of it gives me that fix, you know. Yeah, I totally um, get that, yeah. So I'm getting to that, obviously just really enjoying it. I, the thing is Madden's similar to FIFA in the obviously players for a long many years are complaining about how there's not enough change and stuff, doesn't get enough care in the mode. And I completely see that as well and I completely feel it. I think the difference is obviously I've not played Madden for as many years, as long as FIFA, anywhere yeah. near as long. Yeah. So I, I don't quite have that wear and tear yet. So I stand I can still kind of come onto it and enjoy it really. Yeah, yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, so yeah. Um so the reason I've kind of stuck with them, I've not delved into anything too kind of deep, is because naturally the Witcher Free next gen version is coming soon. Mm-hmm. And I did consider playing Mass Effect, me and my pal were talking about it, and it really got me kind of hyped up to play it. Love those games as we've spoken about. But I I know that if I start Mass Effect, I won't be able to finish it anywhere near in time before the Witcher next gen update comes out. So I'm really just biding my time for that mm. now. I don't want to get stuck into anything with a big story and stuff because I know that it will clash basically. What's the date again? Uh, 14th. Next week, next Wednesday. Oof. Yes, and we are currently recording this on the Wednesday, the week before. So okay, that's yeah. Big one. Very, very excited. So until yeah, then, yeah. just biding my time. You know. Fair enough, yeah. So yeah, that's what I've been playing this week. And Amazing. with that, um, I think we can we can call it a show there. I think so. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Yeah, we really appreciate you guys if you made it through to the end. That's a massive commitment and we're really grateful. I'm really grateful to everyone who's who's been listening and watching so far. And tuning in. Hopefully, we can continue doing this for a long, long time. I agree. Yeah, that would be great. And uh, we're loving it, aren't we? We are loving it. Yeah, and uh, we also love hearing from you. So let us know if uh, what you think about Saints Row. Are you still a yep. fan? Are you going to play? Are you playing this new one currently? You know. Yep. Let us know. How did you get on in higher or lower? Yeah. Are you going to play City Skylines? Let us know. Yes, please. And remember, you can let us know by. <laughs> getting at us on our YouTube, which is the Ash Bros Podcast, or you can comment on the video version, which is on my personal YouTube, which is Bromer18. You can also find us on Twitter at Ash Bros Podcast. Um, you can get us on the website, theashbrospodcast.com. Um, and you can also find us on Gmail. That's uh, ashbrospodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to rate and review the podcast. That helps us out so, so much. More than you could ever know, trust me. Um Absolutely. and we'll we'll really appreciate it as well. Yeah. So if we if we if we get like a couple of uh good comments, we might you know, we've we've reviewed them before, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we could, you know, get involved in it. We, we can have, you know, we can review what yeah. you say. Feature and, you on the podcast. Uh, exactly. If you want to get featured, throw us a message. 
with that being said, we are going to call it a show there. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. And now I'm going to throw final word over to my wonderful co-host. Thank you once again. It's December. The Christmas jumpers are out. And we'll yes. see you next week. Ta-ra. Bye-bye. <laughs>